I like to go to museums for a couple of reasons. Um, and I usually like to bring a journal or a sketchbook or a book that I'm also reading. Um, Cause you just never know like what thoughts you'll have or what things will pop out at you that you might, maybe they're not actual like sentence thoughts. Like it's just part of an image that you like. So it's better to sketch it out. I first saw the show Education by Stone and the video art piece Les Motif with my friend who's a professor in um, historic preservation and urban architecture and history of spaces. And it was really cool seeing those pieces with him because he's around so many projects that deal with architecture and space and like what happened previously in that space. So for Cynthia to use chalk as the measurement tool in that installation as a reference to the school and education that happened in those spaces is kind of interesting. Um, I don't, I'm still not quite sure what it made me feel being in that space. It felt like more of an aesthetic thing, just like visual dashed lines across brick. Um, I guess you definitely make, it feels like you're measuring something. Probably the labor that it took to build those walls. I really like Le Motif. The first time I saw it, I like watched it cycle through a couple times. And I first walked in where it was just the water and all the bubbles foaming together, so you didn't know what the source was. And then eventually you see that it's people cleaning a floor that's creating this really beautiful abstract pattern. And I just thought it was a really beautiful poetic piece. Like what is a painting today? I think it's really interesting to see how the digital aesthetic has influenced so many things that are older ways of making. So it's interesting to see how these patterns that are clearly formed through digital means are now translated into painting. So like those gradients, I feel like are very much a di digital aesthetic. So it's interesting to see it cycle back through painting um, and makes you maybe meditate on the fact that that's the case. Like, what does it mean to be painting something that's so digital? And when I see things like that, I always kind of just wonder, like, what is the artist thinking about when they paint these really detail-oriented uh, paintings? Yeah, it seemed like a really great exploration of color theory, too. And these weird membranes of, like, hands coming out. <laughs> totally insane. Room with the speakers. I, I really love thinking about sound and different ways of making people slow down and think about sound in their everyday environment. And the speaker systems were cool. They were supposed to be based off of when people would just throw speaker stacks onto each other to have a party in the middle of the street. <laughs> so I think that it's probably most effective for me when it has um, his neighborhood sounds channeling through it. It's pretty cool. It's like a crazy monster. I just want to give it a hug. <laughs> I just want to hug those speakers. They're so great. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, pretty cool. Like weird monoliths. Yeah. That refrigerator. Oh, that refrigerator is really interesting. It's so creepy, kind of. 2001 style. But <laughs> it really made me think of 2001. I really like that piece just coming from the advertising world. Um, it really hits home thinking about what does it mean to have all these products and dialogue as a world. So like, what does it mean to be in a Samsung world from a 2001 perspective? Because all of the things were Samsung objects. And I liked the idea of personification. So like, what is this fridge thinking? <laughs> like, what would this fridge be like? Vocoder craziness. That vocoder was great. If that was a vocoder. It was pretty eerie walking in and seeing just the green screen with those objects. But that's how a lot of that photography is probably done. Um, so it's interesting to take something like that that's so everyday for us in advertising and just put it in the museum like that. That's a pretty common, common trope in art. All like commercialism and art world uh, conversation back and forth. Oh, walking into, I really liked the 
the rooms where it's just walking into his memories. Well, I guess there were two different things. There was one walking into what his hard drive was like with everything materialized from his hard drive and then walking into a room that the space that was all his memories. I really like projects that deal with memory a lot. So I really liked the sunroom and the underpass sculpture was really cool. I think those probably will stick with me the, the longest. I thought it was really beautiful to see a place that you have so many memories of being in recreated in a space like that. And there are so many different types of infrastructure represented in that space too. Not the dark room. It was the one where your camera was doing weird things when you were shooting the spiral. Um, but I also really liked how he exposed how his media is set up. So his like LED screens, you saw it to the very, very building block of what it was, or in certain rooms where, for example, Felix's tail, you got to see the breakdown of what that film was like per cell. So I really appreciated the idea of like taking these memories or like that room, I guess, is creating a weird, that was that room, <laughs> <laughs> the, the history lesson room about all these Felix artifacts. <laughs> um, and so doing that for his memories too was pretty cool. Well, I guess it, maybe there was an interesting parallel with the hard drive, taking everything from his hard drive and manifesting it as real objects, and then taking all these moments that are from his memory and manifesting them as actual objects for other people to experience. I feel like he probably did that on purpose, having them be rooms right next to each other. So thinking about what is memory, whether it's digital or, or your own. I hope that pe people feel like... I think it always makes me sad when people feel like art's frivolous, because I think it's so important just to have like those mo moments of free expression. Um, that's why like freedom of speech is so important. So... But yeah, I just hope that there are always spaces where people can do that and then witness the thoughts of others in those quiet spaces. It should be a human right for freedom of speech. So I just always hope that there are spaces available for people to make art because that is a form of freedom of speech. And it's important to hear those voices. Uh, and I also really like when museums uh, where museums have become more of a community space where they'll have panels or um, like community engagement programs as part of the exhibition. I just always think that's so important. Going, yeah, going to museums, you, <laughs> things that are in museums ideally reflect what's going on culturally and around the world. So that's why I think that they're really important spaces to maintain. I just really wanted to play with those box amps in that one room. In the the sun room, there are these two box amps, and I just like wish that you could go up and just like turn them up to ten or something, and it not be a deal <laughs> like a big deal. <laughs> That's the one thing I want to be able to touch everything, and it's just I can't touch everything, and I want to touch everything. <laughs> That's the only problem sometimes. It's like why can't I touch this? But I guess that's a question too. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really liked seeing how the projections were being made. That was pretty cool. Old film footage. I come from a pretty analog background. Uh, I studied like letterpress and printmaking and kind of like the beginning of image making and how that's transitioned into digital stuff. So for me, seeing media art shows that start with like, here is how we edited film footage up to like Ellie or up to what, do you, what were those panels, the LED panels? Seeing that whole evolution, I just like thinking in those kind of circular terms for media, like where it came from, like projecting into the future a little bit. Yeah, I like sci-fi stuff. Maybe that's why I really like the fridge piece too, is how sci-fi it felt. I hope that I have a fridge like that in my uh, kitchen in the future. I'll just paint my kitchen green and have a fridge like that. It'd be terrible. <laughs> I just like looking at books and they have a really great book collection that sometimes I'll just go on the weekends. I'll just go when the museum opens and I'll stay there till it closes between going to the different rooms and reading stuff. Yeah. 
It's cool. So we were drinking some coffee and then I saw a, a glimpse of this composition book pattern from underneath the table and pulled it out and it was a bird book from like 2015. And it's just been people's like scribbles throughout the years, you know, pretty fun. Totally full of scribbles from like the past few years. There's one spread where it's two mountains and like a giant sun and I feel like that was like one of the very first things I like learned to draw in grade school. I was like, look, I can show perspective. It's two big mountains with a bunch of tiny mountains in the middle. It's always interesting to see what people do when it's anonymous, but also when people um, know it's like in a museum space. The cursive spread's the best. <laughs> Definitely the best. Chaotic with a K.